celebrating them during the Women's Month. But we want to find out how ICT has really helped them uh, when it comes to their daily life, when it comes to their work at the end of the day. And uh, when we look at health, health has also really been helpful, has really been helped when it comes to ICT, uh, the medical distribution of supplies, when it comes to cutting costs and, uh, you know, visiting uh, your doctor at the end of the day, you can discuss that and much more uh, with the new technologies in place. We want to find out how this has enabled them uh, to be accommodated. And uh, joining me on set, Again, I'm having women on my panel, and uh, this time round, uh, this fourth day of April 2023, I'm joined by Angela Lawino, as uh, she's a psychologist and public relations officer uh, from Safe Places Uganda. And uh, of course, right here for this episode, I'm also joined by Nankunda Rona, nutritionist at uh, Impact Nutrition Company Limited. Are uh, they here to share with us? We want to find out more of their stories. Rona, you're most welcome to the program. Thank you. How is your morning? It's beautiful. How is April? April is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me today. Okay. Um, next to Rona. Um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good to have you. Thank you. How have you been? Um, flu. Mm -hmm. But that is how my April has started. <laughs> flu and cough. A bit Literally. Of not a bit. A lot. <laughs> a lot of flu. A lot. But the good thing we are talking health. Yes. So we have to find out when it comes to the colds, what should we do about that? Rona and is going to take Rona us through that, right? <laughs> <laughs> on how to handle the colds. Yes. And that. Since it has been improved, I can just, you know, use my phone uh, to get all the assistance I need. Mm. Not just asking Mr. Gogo, but asking the doctor himself. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's true. Well, um, right here at the National Broadcaster, uh, we're happy to be discussing issues to related to women and, of course, ICT itself. Uh, how has ICT enabled you? How, when you incorporate it in your daily day-to-day -day work, how has it been of help to you? Should I start with Rona? <laughs> sure, that's okay. Well, ICT, I can say that we are in the digital space, especially because we realize that nutritionists cannot be found everywhere, rather in the hospitals, in the health facilities. Mm -hmm. So we got into the digital space and developed an application at Impact Nutrition Company Uganda and we are able to access our clients online. So irrespective of where an individual is, we are able to give them the help that they need. So it's very, very resourceful. But beyond the application, even via WhatsApp, which is still ICT, even via a call, which is still ICT, we are able to deliver services to individuals and we registered a lot of impact. Mm -hmm. So ICT is very relevant in the health industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We cannot do without it. Indeed. At safe places, how has it been? <laughs> how has it been like for you? I think I wouldn't differ much from what Rona has said. Um, using just say, social media, you would put up something, um, especially being safe places being a mental health treatment facility. It's, we'll put up a service that we offer and people will be so shocked and they'll say, oh my God, we didn't know that we had this service in Uganda outside of Butabika. You know, so there are different programs that we have, different services that we offer that because people are not um, sure, yeah, we're not in the newspaper, we're not on TV, we're not using, um, what do they, they usually call them, what are they called? The digital media platforms, the, the previous ones, yeah? Mm -hmm. So because we are now using sh social media where everyone is, people are more likely to get to know that these services are present and these services are available to them. So social media has really helped even with service delivery, like Rona had said, where we are able to have counseling sessions on phone where we are, someone is able to reach out and say, you know what, I need help in this and this area. How can you support me? And we do it over phone, you know, so just different things like that that have really supported in growing the mental health treatment, you know, space in Uganda. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, we need to earn, we need to have that money flowing. <laughs> and ICT has really enabled so many other businesses out there, mm. and not only those in uh, relatedly, say, maybe graphics editors or maybe those of the p public relations officers mm. uh, directly are dealing with ICT itself, but even in the health, there's a lot of money. So if I deal with you on phone, does a consultation come through? <laughs> Haven't you had others failing to, <laughs> to, meet, to meet that as well? Well, it does come through, especially because 
the first call for us, I'll speak for Impact Nutrition, the first call really is about if you want a service, you've got to make a payment. So mm -hmm. as soon as I make that call, <laughs> yes. not be like, you know, I have this headache and it has been, you know, giving me that migraine. What should I swallow? But at the end of the day, when you visit the health, the health unit, uh, you need to first pay before you talk to the doctor. Exactly. So, so uh, as soon as I make the call. Yes, as soon as you be. make the call, before mm -hmm. you get the service. I mean, being in the service industry is a bit tough. Um, if you offer the service, you will end up not earning from it if the payment is not made prior. So we usually ensure that we communicate to the client at the first call. So in the initial consultation is really to just let you know that this is what we can give you, but you've got to pay for it. So before we get into the real business, we must receive payment first. At least some payment At least something. Yes. You know. um, the psychologist there, Angela. Um, I think it's more or less the same. I'm, try I'm seeing that we have a lot of similarities <laughs> and that's interesting but it's more or less the same because the first session that we usually have is um, okay so let me get to know the type of help that you need. Let me understand where you are at the moment. Let me understand you know what exactly are you expecting from me? How can I be of support from you? Where have you decided to see a psychologist? So in that moment we are doing a sort of assessment of sorts. Then after that, and a consultation still applies because we have offered a service, right? So then we'll get into, okay, so this is now your treatment plan. Then we start working on the things that you want to achieve, the targets that you, want, that you have set. And we say, okay, so this is how we're going to break down the sessions, whether they are happening virtually or they are happening in person or we're having a hybrid sort of thing. It's that the first session informed the next sessions, but it's still the service was offered. Well, recently I was, I was having a chat with my colleagues at work, and I was like, um, we need to choose a day and go to the streets and get to uh, listen to people's issues when it comes to health. Mm -hmm. And um, he suggested, was like, how about we ask, uh, why, why would someone end up committing suicide? Mm. And you being a psychologist, Angela, I'm like, oh, with your findings all through, um, what are some of those cases that you encounter on a daily? Is it to do with suicide? Um, well, based off of statistics and the field that I work in specifically, is that what we'll see is most of the cases that come in for mental health are related to depression and anxiety. So the larger percentage of people that come in for help, depression and anxiety is usually the primary uh, presenting issue. Um, but I also, where I work, we also handle addiction. So you find that the people that come in, it's also addiction related. But even within addiction, it's very easy for you to find cases of depression and anxiety. Um, now, when we get to the cases of people who have died by suicide, so we do not say committed suicide because it seems like, um, I don't know, it just seems wrong. It's scary. Yes, it seems it's scary. It's too tough. It seems oppressive of the person, like the person, you know, you say committed a crime. Yeah. So when you say committed suicide, it's almost like... So how do you phrase it? So we say died by suicide. Died by suicide. Died by suicide. Wow. So how did this person die? Okay. You do not say they committed suicide. You say they died by suicide. Um, so in most of those cases, usually it's depression, depression, sometimes it's um, the person is struggling with a mental illness and they have failed to just make it work. So something like psychosis. Um, I'm sorry. So and I what is that, psychosis? Uh, exactly. I'm, so, it out. so I'm here thinking some of these terminologies would need a bit of explanation. Psychosis. So I think it's like a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have mental illnesses that have the capacity to just severely alter the functioning of the brain. And because of that, this person is put in a situation where it just seems like suicide is the best alternative because mm -hmm. they've almost lost control. And they have tried of, all yes, avenues. Yes, you know, like mm -hmm. someone has tried, mm -hmm. let's say, medication, someone has tried therapy, mm -hmm. but for some reason, that dark cloud has failed to pass. Okay. Then with psychosis, and when you look at something like schizophrenia, Again, it's like <laughs> definitions, right? But when you psychosis add, itself, we missed out. <laughs> so psychosis on its own is basically um, someone losing touch with reality. 
Mm. Yeah, so I, that's the simplest way to put it. Because Jesus. of depression and stress? Um, it can come because of a number of issues. So someone can end up in a state of psychosis due to prolonged severe depression that has gone untreated. Okay. Someone can also end up in a state of psychosis because of a mental illness such as schizophrenia. So schizophrenia usually comes along with psychosis. So now when that happens, it's like... Um, Maybe a way I can put it is if you have a little voice in your head that is just constantly telling you, um, it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. You're better off in so the So are, are, are those the common cases that you encounter on a daily as mm. far as Uganda is concerned? As far as Uganda is concerned, it's usually depression and anxiety. Depression, depression and, anxiety. and anxiety. With statistics of mental health and even with the, f the work that we do, mm -hmm. a lot of the cases that we handle are depression and anxiety. Could it be like maybe pressure from work? And so the, mm. the causes of the depression and anxiety are so many. They could range from grief. They could range from relationship distress. They could uh, range from job loss. So I want to work. figure out mm -hmm. at least how we can, you know, bit by bit. No. Oh. <laughs> this is getting too technical. Yes. But anyway, um, not only uh, taking tablets and all that, mm. I'm, I'm looking at Rona, the nutritionist here. Uh, someone was telling me, uh, you know, for, for your scars or you want to heal better, you need to do the green all the time. <laughs> Make sure you have the greens on your, your, your meals every day. Um, how do you handle such cases when it comes to nutrition? or how is the process, your, your, your prescription? Well, um, speaking into that, um, it's, we've not had so many cases in that direction, but I would say that everyone requires to speak to a nutritionist or a dietitian, irrespective of whatever condition they have. So for such mental cases or mental related cases, really the concern would be about whether they are able to feed well or do they overfeed as they go through the process of depression and anxiety. So then we get to establish what exactly they are doing in that time. They so is are it depressed. normal when I'm stressed? Every time I'm stressed, I'm snacking. Every time I'm stressed, I'm snacking. Something. Ideally, it's is, not is it normal. normal. You should, it, there should be something else that you can relate with. And this is why I, I have been somewhere before with Angela. And we were agreeing that all these, um, all these fields feed into each other. Because when you seek the help from you the, know, psychologist. the psychologist and you are making progress, then you would be able to relate better with food you can know that then I do not have to deal with my anxiety using food. So it's a process. That's to say that the nutritionist does not work alone. The nutritionist works with the psychologist. Mm -hmm. The nutrition works with the doctor. So we need each other in the network space. That is even where ICT comes in from. Yes. To network. Exactly. If Amazing. I can just add something no, to feel free. Side, feel free. Um, even when we are treating depression, we usually ask, so you're eating. How are you eating? What are you eating? At what time are you eating? How often are you eating? So it's even the food that you eat has the ability to contribute because we know food has nutrients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes some of these things come about and a way in which you can kind of help yourself is by the food that you eat. There's food that you will eat that will add certain nutrients to your body that will support in the boosting of your mood. Not like every day you're doing the chapati and the donut. Every morning, it's like it's a routine. First of all, what you do the black is in tea, chapati and You donut. do the black tea and the So, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's hear it from Rona, the nutritionist. How is, uh, how, what are some of those common cases that you count on a daily? Um, the commonest are really, the commonest that we are dealing with are not exactly associated with her, but I also want to mention that usually people don't notice that they're in a state of depression or anxiety. Mm -hmm. So indeed, that's where ICT comes in to help us boost this. I mean, I believe on their social media, they're able to mention several things that people can use to identify what the challenge could be or to help people identify that they are actually in a state of depression mm -hmm. or anxiety. But in my space, we 
have mostly dealt with uh, people that are diabetic, people that are hypertensive, people that are obese, but also the malnourished cases. Now, that was through school practice, mm -hmm. but from my practice since I started doing nutrition, it's majorly been non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, and then obesity, which is really a high risk factor for those conditions. Mm -hmm. those but but in cases. Uganda, mm -hmm. yes, very common. In Uganda, we can say it's a double burden of disease. So we have people having, you know, overfeeding or underfeeding. So all those are actually on a good rise in Uganda. So we've had... How can I really be on a balance? I'm trying to... <laughs> Think through it. And this is this why you should pay for a consultation, under. Sandra. Some tips. Kindly share <laughs> some tips. <laughs> What's the goal? For me to share the tips, I should know what your goal is. So because this is I mean, where... If I'm not anywhere, I'm mm. not under and I'm not, you know, I'm supposed to be somewhere. Yes. So what do I need to do to be somewhere? Eat healthy. And Eat healthy. Yes, when I speak of healthy, this is not to say that there is a specific food that we would say, don't totally eat this food. It's really usually about how you use the food. Mm. Mm. It's not that a donut is bad as per se. I need to have like, if it's a meal, I need to have like a variety, different exactly. colors. I have yes. the brown, I have the white, mm -hmm. I have the green. Yes. To balance the colors on exactly. the plate. Exactly. But don't balance matoke with... Uh, um, balance matoke with uh, sweet potato and then with posho and rice <laughs> and then forget the vegetables and the fruit portion mm -hmm. or the protein part. I mean, you could say you're balancing, but you are having spaghetti and then macaroni <laughs> and then um, and minced you meat. Know, matoke. <laughs> exactly. And you're not having the others. So there are different categories of food. And when mm -hmm. we say that you should balance them, it's not just about the color. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about having foods from the different different categories. Mm. So we have the carbohydrates, we have the proteins, we have the vegetables, okay, the vitamins and minerals which come from vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. So when we say have a balanced diet, we are really speaking into you having portions of each of these through your day. In this economy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Thank away you. from that, yes. um, the psychologist. <laughs> Angela, have you had like calls? Uh, of course, are you talking about a depression and a stress, mm -hmm. certain things you cannot do away with on a daily. I want to tell you avoid the avoid the dust, mm -hmm. avoid the stress, you know, avoid the cold, you know, and sometimes it ends up raining. Certain things you can't really avoid. Mm -hmm. Have you had calls of like uh, people over complaining with the headaches, or the migraines themselves, you know? Um, that is in relation to mental illnesses yes, or, or mental health challenges. Yes, mental health challenges. What, what causes those headaches? Um, so maybe how I can answer that question, if I've understood it correctly, is that when we are struggling with our mental health and we do not attend to it, um, the simplest way that I can put it is your mind begins to communicate to your body for your body to signal you that something is wrong. So that's why you will find someone who maybe has muscle pains, has a headache, is very weak, and they go to the hospital and the doctor tells them, you, you just need to rest. Yeah, you're just stressed. You are, go see a psychologist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I have handled someone before who was struggling with something and they did so many tests on their body until one of their doctors told them, I think you need to go and do an assessment with a psychiatrist or see a psychologist. And they found that what they were struggling with was actually in their mind. Yeah? So then we have cases like, um, I've forgotten its name, I've forgotten its textbook name, but it's an anxiety that causes people to think that they are sick of something, that something is wrong in their body. So someone will just keep going to doctors, like, no, something is wrong. I, have, I must have arthritis, I'm constantly having joint pain. I must have things like that. So if, I'm hoping that I've answered your question correctly, but many times it's that there's an underlying mental health condition that you have not looked at, that you have not kind of worked on, and so your body is beginning to... To communicate. Yes, to demand some attention for Does that issue. Help, um, is it a myth? I don't know. Like, are they usually say, uh, take some time off. Uh, when mm -hmm. was the last time you, you walked without shoes? You know, you, you need to have some time and move. 
So some of those no shoes, no they actually do and have enjoy certain the soil, benefits. You know, they have certain benefits. Yes, they do. Not have like isolating benefits. yourself and going to the village. I know, but at least having some time to yourself yeah. for healing. It does have. It works. Yes, it does because you see, sometimes, um, sometimes we get so clouded by the thoughts, the opinions, the perceptions of everyone around us, of social media of our parents, of our siblings, of our bosses, of our, and you're not listening to what your body, what your mind is communicating to you. So then it becomes very important for you to take some time and say, you know what, let me, let me spend some time alone. Let me listen to what my mind is telling me. Let me listen to what my body is asking me for. But if you do not take that time to just withdraw, how are you going to listen if like intently listen if there are so many voices around you that are speaking. Yeah, so I do so think sometimes it's important. you need to at least let go, you know? Yes. You breathe in. Yes. And you let your feet touch the ground. Yes. Amazing. I well, find um, that very interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, psychology must be very interesting. It's it's um, usual with people that they will not take on the smallest. Okay, what seems to be the small solution? People like to hear big stuff. <laughs> so it's interesting to know that yeah, there are times Angela have to, must have registered it's success about you with swallowing patients. a tablet every I mean, single time. Sometimes exactly. it's, it has nothing to do with swallowing tablets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. It's sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we do recommend that when you need to take your medication, take your medication. Because there are going to be cases where you need to take your medication. But sometimes there are other techniques that you can incorporate into your life to just take care of your mental health. And then uh, uh, something else that um, really happens commonly mm. is uh, the, the boosters mm -hmm. to boost your immunity. Like on a daily you have a vitamin C, on a daily you have um, such uh, I think I'm going to ask Rona to tell us about such those. Such supplements. <laughs> is it okay? Won't it be a, a excess? Well, um, like I said, we are interlinked <laughs> service <laughs> providers. So I wonder if she commonly works with doctors, but we commonly work with doctors. So while the doctor might recommend that you require, you know, a vitamin supplement, I may be able to tell you how you can get these from your daily intake of foods. And of course, as a nutritionist, before we even recommend that you take the supplement, we have established, for example, for iron, we have done laboratory tests to establish that you're actually lacking in those. And if we decide to just take the route of nutrition, it may not be able to work as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So then we can recommend a supplement of that. So but except no, there is no an shortcut. establishment, yes. No we, shortcut, you have to first go through the, exactly. through the laboratory tests. Yes, you should be able to establish that indeed this is lacking for you to begin recommending that someone takes mm -hmm. the supplements. Unfortunately, many people are used to uh, sell of medicating which is wrong and also every time you have to ask mr google please talk about <laughs> that as well <laughs> not calling your doctor not anything or maybe it's a messing you know and just tell yourself that and you go and tell yourself yeah. asking mr google please um i think like she talked about self-medicating i think with mr google we really appreciate mr google but there's a way in which people have also started self-diagnosing so someone is like, okay, so um, I had someone say that OCD is this. And then OCD, they go into Google and OCD, then they're OCD like, okay, so <laughs> I have OCD. So OCD, <laughs> okay, no, let me change, let me change. Someone is like, okay, so um, the other day it was depression, is this and this. Okay, so I have depression. Um, you see, depression is, can sometimes just be sadness. Sometimes you can be sad. Yeah. So for us to diagnose that you have depression, there are assessments that we do. There are things that we look at. The sadness has to be persistent for a certain number of weeks. The, there have to be other things that are present along with the persistent sadness. But you, you have just looked at one thing and then you have gone and said, I have that. I have this. Yes. And you start treatment. Yes. And you start on the treatment yourself. Yourself. You don't even go and get support because you see even in, at, when you search on Google, you can find out what's the best medication, what mm. are the best antidepressants. Yes, I know. Wh where can I get them from? 
then you go to the pharmacy and you ask, um, then in Uganda with our regulations, someone can buy some of these drugs over the counter without a prescription. So then you find that it becomes such a challenge. And yeah, the, Mr. Google, appreciate, but um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, my, my, my take on that would be that um, we have the people available here to give us the help. So those are some of the challenges like Angela has said. While Mr. Google is helping businesses thrive, <laughs> or while the internet or ICT is helping businesses thrive, it's also being a distraction for some of us. So I think it comes back to self-regulation. Like you as an, indi an individual, you should be able to take charge of your life. There is so much information out mm -hmm. there, so much information on Mr. Google. How do we trust that it's all coming from people that are actually certified to give out this information? Mm -hmm. Some people don't even know how to Google right. So you Google and actually get the wrong information. Mm -hmm. But also we may have signs and symptoms mm -hmm. appearing in different cases, mm -hmm. right? So we have some signs for this particular disease, but there are also signs and symptoms for another disease. Yeah. So as an individual, I think that you need to go beyond the Mr. Google. Go ahead and consult with a doctor. Talk to a real person, <laughs> to a real person. Also, in a contextualized manner, that is to speak specifically to nutrition. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people have tried to Google how to lose weight, for example, and you will have options that you don't even have within the Ugandan space, and you're thinking this is not workable simply because you found food options that are not readily available in Uganda. So how about you speak to a Ugandan nutritionist who is mm -hmm. able to tell you that while this is, uh, these nutrients are found in this or while this can help you achieve your goal, this is what you can get it from. This mm -hmm. is the food source within the Ugandan space that you can get it from. So well, I think that about the being, the uh, there's too much uh, information going through and uh, maybe you don't even actually know someone being certified or something. Uh, go, go right ahead and they do exercise and they practice what they're being told mm -hmm. uh, from such sites, such yes. websites, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, like they mess, mess you up. Have you had such encounters or maybe such a scenario? Uh, like the nutritionist, they told me to eat this. Uh, the, the way they treat you, uh, there's nothing like... Um, an average, uh, how can I put it? Like you go to the psychologist there, she's like, you need to swallow two tablets, two times two, mm -hmm. you get it. Yes. But when it comes to the nutritionist, uh, once you're given the treatment, there's no like a, 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 a standard amount. Someone will end up taking an overdose, like real drinking the whole green mm -hmm. because I was told to drink the whole green. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what they say. Yes, thank you. When that's it comes so, to you. Yes, exactly. That's like overdoing stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get to Google and you're told that if you, um, okay, the only way for you to detoxify is by taking that green thing. But while we are looking at nutrition, we are looking at overall health. We are not looking at just you being able to shed off the weight. I mean, while you shed off the weight, do you want to look old while you are 23 years old? Mm. What happens when you shed off the weight off the green? Or after you return to real meals, what is going to happen to your body? And your body is not designed to be on and off, up and down. So what I'm trying to say is, Google can actually mislead you. You can end up overdoing something. In your head, you fix this as the solution and then overdo it while you're creating risk for another you know another organ risk. in the body exactly uh, because at the end of the day we've also had uh, such cases of organs failing exactly uh, so have you had uh, patients complaining of such yes we have had some i will speak of one of course without disclosing the names mm -hmm. um she she is outside uganda but she got into our space and she was telling of an experience of her weight loss journey and how she found out from Google that she could do intermittent fasting and she was overdoing it. So her experience was that she got ulcers out of the process. Um, but also she had extreme pains. I mean, she would have to tie herself through the night to sleep because she was too hungry. And it's because she's trying to follow intermittent fasting. By the end of the day, she lose the weight itself. <laughs> There's losing. She lost it, and it came back because it, it wasn't back. being it, it wasn't being done the right way. And it came back with the ulcers, some other pain exactly, as well. Exactly, other experiences. So, it's not about you losing the weight. 
it's not about you controlling your blood sugar for a moment. It's not about you controlling your blood pressure for a moment. It should be geared to a lifetime result. I mean, you should do something that you're able to do for a lifetime so that when you come out of this space that you don't like, you don't return to it. Mm. But if you are not regulated or if you do not speak to the right professionals, mm. then you will have results and then lose them, have results, lose them and keep going through the cycle. Well, as you think of um, a prescription to give, <laughs> to give Angela there because she, had, she has a cold, <laughs> um, uh, maybe um, letting us know some of the achievements that you've just had along the way. I know it's tricky uh, on a <laughs> daily psychology itself uh, and having such cases come through, but I, I know I think, the lighter um, moments. If I speak in it in a just a broad perspective of um, psychology is a very rewarding job. I think uh, professions that touch directly to the person are very rewarding. Um, and I think even Rona can agree mm -hmm. of being able to see a patient who came to you and they were at a point of just, for example, someone who is suicidal, someone who has lost all hope in life, someone who has just maybe lost their marriage, is in the verge of losing their children, and being able to journey with them through the process of picking themselves up, restoring their family, um, improving their relationship with their children. It's a very rewarding thing of someone has come into addiction treatment, and this person has been struggling with maybe alcohol for 10 years, and then being able to journey with this person as they walk through their journey of sobriety, I think it's very, a very, very interesting journey and a very inspiring journey of, you know, someone comes, they're just in a state of depression, in a state of anxiety, in a state of, I don't understand myself and I do not think that I will ever be able to live what society looks, as, looks at as a normal life. But then you're able to journey with them and now they're doing things that they consider to be things that normal people do. Speaking about journey with them, mm -hmm. that takes like a, a three month session <laughs> or a week session. People love knowing how long therapy is. People <laughs> love knowing. Oh it, my god! You know, you start a conversation with a client, and then the client, you, the client, to say, okay, um, <laughs> so. How many sessions are those? And you're just thinking, okay, so we're just so getting started. We're just getting started. Um, but with therapy, we don't usually like to dictate how long. Because I might start working with Rona, and Rona is very intentional about it. So when there are assignments, she does them. When there are challenges that she has to go out, um, so Rona might have a challenge speaking to maybe the opposite sex. And now I give her little assignments that she has to do to kind of get her slowly by slowly to get comfortable enough to speak to them. And she goes out and she does them. You know, she's afraid, but she does it. And then you have someone else who, yes, I want to get on through this journey, but I'm still a bit scared. So you'll give them an assignment and they won't try. They'll just come and say, no, I looked at him from a distance and I, I just felt I could not. Like the word, you know, so it becomes a bit harder. So everyone else, a bit longer rather. So everyone is on a different journey when it comes to therapy. Rona might need three months and after three months, she can space out her sessions. Another person might do six months. Or maybe she can even end up having a relapse and then <laughs> doesn't try to attempt again. I'm not going to speak, I'm not going to speak on that. <laughs> not to you. Yeah. No, relapse. no, no. But um, so just understanding that people are different and you walk your own journey and you keep trying and then eventually you get to a place where you can space out. Because mm. even as much as there are people who do therapy, let's say people who decide I want to do therapy every week for the rest of my life. It's like, yes, that's good, um, but you have to make sure that what you're putting into therapy, you have an opportunity to try it. One would think they must be loaded. They have a lot of cash. A lot of two cash. Weeks, two weeks. <laughs> every after two weeks. Every after a week. My entire every life. Week, every week. So I need to be saving. I need um, to have a box set I think, aside. I think there are certain things that are just priority. So, for example, if I know that I need Not therapy, luxury. Not like You prioritize you them. You prioritize. So it's that... However little I earn, for me in this season, therapy is very important. So that means the moment that a salary comes on, 
I need to detect that percentage. You remove it. Okay. Yeah. So, and you plan <laughs> like that and you keep moving like that. Yeah. You, I know. Yeah. There are certain things we talk about, psychology, therapy, sessions, mm. nutrition, and someone is like, oh, listen to them. Mm. Mm? How will I spend my money, you know? Before I even get to pay my own self the mm. salary, I have to make percentages. This is for that. That is yeah. for Jake. That is off, you know? Mm. Um, lighter moments for you. Well, um, before I even get there, I just want to add to Angela's voice. While you may think it's a luxury, the implications of not dealing with whatever situation it is at the moment can actually be grievous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could go beyond what you can anticipate. So better to invest in at the moment so that you're able to enjoy the rest of your life because you get to be more productive. I mean, imagine being in the right body for you, mm -hmm. being um, confident about who you are. I mean, even when you're going through the process of improving your glucose levels, you are helping yourself. Because every time you are hyperglycemic, you're less productive, you lose hours of work. So you're losing hours of money, if we are to translate that into money. So how about you consider investing money in nutrition to control, to have your blood glucose levels under control, mm -hmm. and then enjoy your overall health. But for the viewer who look for you today, at least we'll have a discount. There has to be a negotiable price. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> That sounds right, <laughs> but like yes, th that's, that's, I mean, that's giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. So, like Angela said, very interesting field to be in. Mm -hmm. Imagine being a psychologist able and a nutri nutritionist. Yeah, very unique. <laughs> very unique, right? Mm -hmm. But very rewarding. Imagine being able to improve someone's health and they are better productive. Mm -hmm. They are sleeping better just because they improved their nutrition. They have better bowel movement. Mm -hmm. I, I will use that, that I'll pick from someone's story who likes constipation. I mean, imagine going to the toilet and you have to take forever in the toilet. I mean, like it's a hard process. Just that, we get clients giving us that feedback. Like, before I even see all the other results, I can't believe I am passing out better. Mm. And that's exciting for them. I have a friend them. this morning, actually, she came rushing, by the way, speaking about the bowel <laughs> movement. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> I exactly. don't know what I ate. So and she's been there the whole morning, and she's like, I don't even want to put anything in my stomach. You can imagine. Mm. So being able to associate with food better, but also the impact on your overall health is very rewarding. I mean, it, it goes beyond just you being healthy to being more productive, to being able to make more money, to enjoying your life better. So with the success that we have registered, that I have registered personally in terms of improved blood glucose, improved blood pressure, you know, having people in their ideal weight, you will not believe how exciting it is for a woman to fit better in that dress. Someone was telling me how she bought a dress that she knew was not fitting, but she's like, this is going to be my motivation to get where I want to be. To be able to fit in the dress. Yes, so <laughs> the things that excite people yeah. are beyond, you know, they are individualized or personalized, so mm. to say. So the things that might excite you might not be what excites Angela. Mm. But I just want to say that every individual has their own story and it's exciting to know that I am the person that is able to help this individual enjoy their life better. Well, um, Angela, why would someone, um, someone out there could have inspired um, someone out there would love to be like you mm -hmm. and uh, get into that particular field you're in. Mm -hmm. Why would, try to convince them, why would they really <laughs> necessarily well, go into your field, psychology self? Um, I think... Especially on the Ugandan market. Because one thinks only psychology applies to those who work in Butabika. Mm -hmm. Where else can someone work? Um, I'm going to start with the last <laughs> question. <laughs> I'm going to start with your last question. Self place, place, yeah. right? Self place um, is the best place to be. <laughs> but um, I think it's understanding that as a psychologist, there's so much that you can do. It's just unfortunate that in the Ugandan space, we're just starting to, you know, accept this profession. We're just starting to call on the type of work that psychologists do. But as a psychologist, you can work in um, the justice system, 
as a forensic psychologist. You can work in still the justice system, working with children who have been abused. You can work in different ministrations, different parastatals, different corporations in the field of HR. You can work in, um, oh my God, there's so much that you can do as a psychologist. There's so much. You can work in the army. Uh, you can, as a negoci negotiator or things like that, you can, psychology opens you up to so many things. So when you eventually sit down and say, okay, so um, I want to be a psychologist, then you ask yourself, but what type of people do I want to work with within the field of psychology? There is so much. It's not like the way it used to be um, when you're done with school, maybe you, you want to enroll in a particular course quick, you know, then mm. you get convenient, you know. Uh, close by, close by your circles, yeah. go in for education. Mm. <laughs> so one would be even like, ah, in psychology. Um, um, you see, even with psychology, mm -hmm. you can work in the field of education. So now, at this point, we have so many things that are incorporated in psychology. So within psychology, you can go and study special needs education. Within psychology, you can go and study behavior analysis. You know, so there's just so much. You just need to open your computer and say, fields within psychology. ICT comes in once I, again. ICT <laughs> comes in to save the day. Um, and I think something that I would say to someone who would like to be like me, I hope there's someone who would like to I be like know, me out there. I know, someone else. Uh, <laughs> but um, something I would say to them is if you are looking for a profession that is 100% give back, because the work that we do, it's like I have gone to school for someone else. Everything I know is for someone else. To be a blessing to someone else. To be a blessing there. to someone else. Because you realize that it is by the words that you speak that someone is able to have their life restored. You know, and of course all this is by the grace of God and the guidance of God and the wisdom that God gives you to be able to do the work that he has called you to. Um, but it's, it's a very rewarding thing. It's that you know, there are times when a client will come and they can genuinely not pay you, but there's that kind of guilt that will be within you of, okay, okay, good, I've had, it's okay. <laughs> I've I'm, done going, my to, I'm <laughs> going to help them. I'm, I'm, let me do my ministry. <laughs> so it's, if you're looking for something that is uh, rewarding, for me it's rewarding. Yeah, it's, in the right shoes. Yes. Well the, blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rona, uh, what's exciting? About exciting. Yes, so for me to switch, say I'll be like, okay, I can switch from my, where I am <laughs> and try something else. Um, I'm like, would I really fit in Rona's shoes? Well, I think that it has a lot to do with what you want as an individual. I wouldn't try to convince someone to get into the nutrition space. Do I need the sciences? Do I need to have the passion? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially for fields that are just springing up like mm -hmm. psychology, you know, for the Ugandan space, psychology, nutrition. I think that it's not something that we need to convince people yeah. into. I feel that it's about what you want as an individual. What do you see yourself? I mean, do you have the desire to impact other people's lives? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to miss the pay but be satisfied in the fact that you changed someone's mm -hmm. life? You prevented them from committing suicide. Do you want to be in that space of knowing that I helped someone not get their leg chopped off because they had uncontrolled sugar levels? Mm -hmm. I mean, so if I don't get the payment, is that rewarding enough for me? Mm -hmm. You should be able to feel like that. I, starting out in the nutrition field wasn't a walkover, but I bless the Lord for, you know, my mentor, the founder of um, Impact Nutrition Company. Very, very... <laughs> A woman of steel. I mean, the space wasn't, it didn't look exciting to be in the nutrition space. If you are focusing on money. That's what I was going to say. Earning. Where was your focus? <laughs> <laughs> was it about enjoying it and having that satisfaction or it was about the money? So if, if it's about the money, starting out can be really tough. Yeah. Like you really need to have something else that is driving you to do the nutrition outside the money. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that is what pushed us to keep you know going forward with this the value that we add to people's health time is against mm -hmm. us um, allow me to <laughs> move right back there uh, what needs to be done what can be done mm, 
you know, we always say a government yet we yambe and things like that. <laughs> Let's talk about it at the end of the day. Uh, what needs to be done for, for people in your field to have a comfortable place? Mm. Yes. Now that we have um, the ICT itself incorporated in and it helps them in the, the health sector, uh, what needs to be done with the experience that you have? Um, awareness. Awareness, psychoeducation. Um, and I think the two tie into each other in some way because you find outside of Kampala, outside of the cities, outside of the people who have gotten educated, outside of the people that have been exposed to some degree, people's perception of mental illness is terrible. Mm -hmm. Mental illness, mental health challenges, it's a very terrible perception. It's that we have to get to a place where everyone is aware, you know, where someone is not sick of a mental illness and they're being chained up and locked in a house, you know, hidden away from society, where people know that, you know what, this is, an, uh, this is a disease. And then they take the person to hospital. So for me, it's awareness and psychoeducation and just l l teaching people, letting them know that mental illnesses exist and mental illnesses are diseases just like the next disease, just like heart attack or diabetes or all these things. It's a disease just like that and it needs medical attention. So awareness, for me, awareness would go a very long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To make, to make things better. To make things better. Yeah. Uh, well, Rona, what needs to be done for you to have the comfort or for some other people also coming up? Not, uh, not necessarily looking at money and uh, you know, having a paycheck at the end of the day, but to make this world a better place for the youngsters out there who are at the university also striving and um, being inspired by Rona. Well, thank you. Uh, do I want to differ? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to differ because you see knowledge is power. Mm. When people have an understanding of the benefits of, you know, the different fields that we are in and how much we would contribute to nutrition. For me, I think that it will go back to the individuals being able to appreciate the role of nutrition in their lives as individuals. That way we are able to impact way beyond just ourselves. So it still comes back to awareness, people being able to appreciate the value that you know these different spaces have to offer. What does nutrition have to do for me? And the understanding of that will help us um, support the nutritionist. <laughs> Many a times you will speak to someone, for example, people that you know, and the person is like, but you were not call it. I mean, that has can to come I just have a point. session for free? Uh -huh. So I think that in, once individuals appreciate the role <laughs> of nutrition, I mean, it's going to help you but add not millions of money. But at the end of the day, I remember there was other culprits, all the ones that, um, at the end of the day, you tagged buffet, yet the yes. majority are not. Oh, yeah, that is true. Mm. So let's appreciate that there are those that are out there are and genuine doing the and right they don't thing. have exaggerated price. Exactly. <laughs> genuine, no exaggerated price, but also support the nutritionist by you know giving them their pay i mean uh, support the psychologist by giving them their pay mm -hmm. because the truth is the reward mm -hmm. be is beyond the pay that you give them okay imagine someone losing track because a client did not pay them okay that would mean they were really not passionate about it but i mean don't be the one that makes someone go off track thinking they can't earn from this yet they are impacting beyond your today they are impacting a whole generation i'm telling you yeah. uh, well um angela before we let you go um you being a psychologist uh, for me to enjoy my day and the rest of the other days some of uh, something to pack to pack for me <laughs> as prescription. Okay. <laughs> Let me look for the one that I can give for free. <laughs> Let me think about it. Um, but I think maybe just two things is gratitude. Um, I think we underestimate the power of gratitude as people. And gratitude is such a beautiful thing, it's such an amazing thing to practice because it drifts the focus of your mind away from everything that is going wrong to everything that is going right. Um, the other thing said for gratitude is you're not going to always be happy. You're not always going to have the best day. Life is not always going to go how you want it to go. You know, so don't allow the fact that there are little things, sometimes they might be big, but don't allow the fact that those little inconveniences have come 
to completely disrupt your day. Take it in, feel what you're feeling, and then proceed. Take it in, feel what you're feeling, proceed. Don't stop just because something has come to inconvenience you. Find a solution, keep going, keep moving, keep trying. Mm -hmm. um, You'll fail a hundred times, but there'll be one time where you'll pass. I don't want to say ten times because, <laughs> trust me, there'll be ten a is moment. little. <laughs> At least you have a moment. Yes, so uh -huh. you have a breakthrough. Just keep going, keep trying, keep trusting in yourself, keep believing in yourself, keep mm -hmm. on speaking good to yourself. Um, yeah, and trust. Trust that things are going to get better. Trust that wow. life is worth living. Trust mm -hmm. that, I can, you know, I those can, little things that you just tell I yourself to get that. pumped I up. I can take that yeah. for the day at this day yeah. <laughs> with no consultation. <laughs> <laughs> Gratitude. <laughs> Gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Rona, um, something to pack along uh, with some, for someone out there is going to enjoy today and the rest of the other days, uh, <laughs> a prescription for them from the nutritionist. Know your goal. Goals are individualized. <laughs> Don't just do stuff because another person is doing. We are <coughs> different individuals with different bodies. Uh, that's not to <laughs> mislead anyone, but I'm just saying know your goal and start working on it and know that the results come from the little things that you do. Every small thing that you do is an investment in improving your health. That's in the line of nutrition. When I say take an extra glass of water, be proud of yourself if you don't been taking water all through the day and you're able to take water. When you take one fruit out of the three that I might tell you to take for the day, be proud of yourself. Cheer yourself on and keep going. And those don't three look fruits at it are which one and which one? <laughs> because they are, they are fruits. fruits. <laughs> Hey, they're fruits. So yes. At least you pick one. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm saying for the start, if, for example, the recommendation is that let's do three fruits on a daily, three servings of fruits on a daily. If you're able to do one, upload yourself and keep going. Don't say, well, I can't do this. I'm only able to do just one. So I don't think I can do this. Yeah, for someone no. who be like, oh, I was told to take the pineapples. They're good to kill the cancer cells. But I have ulcers. I can't do the pineapples. There are options. And this is why we are saying speak to a professional because they are options there is no such thing as I'm going to find all the vitamin um, uh, all the vitamin C in this particular fruit but also if I'm going to take in small amounts of vitamin C from different other fruits that do not have plenty of them how do I help myself to absorb them better well for the person who's watching <laughs> time is against us interesting session right here <laughs> a wonderful episode but if you look out for um Angela and Rona tell them they were watching UBC, so they will give you a discount. <laughs> well, today I was joined by our uh, Nankonda Rona, nutritionist at Impact Nutrition Company Limited. Thank you so much, Rona, just next to me. I uh, wish welcome. you all the best. Thank you. And at the extreme end, I had Angela Lawino, psychologist and public relations officer, Safe Places Uganda. Thank you so much for your time. We know you're busy people, you have to be out in the field. Eh? <laughs> Thanks for sparing some time. My name is Sandra Kahunde, wishing you a blessed day, a blessed week. Enjoy your month, April. And um, looking forward to spending my time with you. That is tomorrow. Enjoy your programming for the day. God bless you. Brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission. Hello. Hello. This is Kasozi. How can I help you? Hey, Kasozi, my brother. Long time. We last met when we were at campus. It's been a while.